This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining me today. We have John Cameron in the middle and Richard Fields on the other end with us today. Richard, there was a report out about your money is now losing close to 1% of its value every 30 days. Yeah, that's using using, uh, uh, current uh, inflation uh, monitoring statistics out of the uh, uh, BLS, uh, which are notoriously uh, underestimating inflation as it actually is. If you actually take the the inflation measurements that were used during the Carter era back in the 70s, or even the Clinton era in the 90s, uh, inflation would be uh, calculated at well over 20% as opposed to the five, six, seven percent that we're looking at right now. And uh, the interesting thing to me is that just like in the 70s when uh, we had inflation, Nixon and Carter and uh, the rest of them uh, wasted no time blaming it on business. Walter Cronkite uh, would go on the news every night and say the oil companies had record profits and blame the oil companies for inflation. On cue, you've got uh, President Biden saying the oil companies have record profits. It's their fault. You have Elizabeth Warren saying uh, that uh, the, uh, I, I forget who she, she was blaming, but she was also blaming business for, for the, uh, the advent of inflation. When the simple fact is that you have two causes to inflation. Number one, you have an increase in the amount of uh, money creation, which is done by the Federal Reserve and nobody else. And number two, you have the federal government essentially shutting down supply by closing down most of the small business uh, sector in the economy in, in 2020. Lower supply of goods and services, higher amount of money to be spent on goods and services, why are it, plus a lot of money going directly into consumers' pockets through the uh, semi checks and the unemployment bump and so forth, why are we surprised that we have inflation? It's econ 101. It's the most elementary thing that we can possibly uh, look at in terms of economics. And you have the politicians already trying to pass the buck. You have the mainstream media, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and all the rest also trying to say, well, this is really a, a supply chain issue. This is really a, a complicated issue. No, it's not. It's not complicated. Reduce supply, increase the money available to buy that supply. Prices go up. Real simple. Yeah, and there's, there's, uh, you know, the if you look at, you know, the obvious cost of inflation and why it costs so, people so much more to do, uh, you know, everyday things. Uh, the, there's there's a huge hidden cost of government uh, that isn't so hidden for those of us that, that understand what's going on. But, you know, the, the cost of regulation in this country uh, by even conservative estimates is a trillion and a half dollars a year. And, and when you have to spend uh, so much money on licensing and fees and uh, the authority to do something that you needed no authority to do before, when all this permission is handing, handed out and it has a huge, huge price tag, that price tag has to be passed on to people. And then when it's passed on to one person, they, in whatever business they're in, uh, have to, in turn, uh, factor the cost of regulation, the cost of doing business, into whatever product or service they're selling, and then that is passed on. I mean, the cost of building houses in California, you know, because of regulation is just regulation alone probably doubles the cost of houses. And that doesn't take into account regulated uh, super high wages. You know, medicine, which used to, uh, um, Richard remembers back in the 1860s, I mean, not the 1860s, the 1950s, when, when most people didn't have health insurance, they basically had, if they had it, they had um, uh, uh, major health care policy and they paid for office visits or even a doctor's visits to their house out of their pocket. And health care costs were 
I think one third of the percentage of GDP that they are, are now, healthcare costs in this country eat almost 20% of GDP costs. Why? Because it's monopoly with guaranteed high wages for everyone. Nobody sees their bill. It's passed on. The government supposedly pays for it. I couldn't get both my air quotes on the screen. It pays for it. So, you know, I, th I think that's another thing we need to take into account. When we just say, you know, everything costs more, you know, and it's a, it's a money, that, you know, money supply, that, that's absolutely true. But the fact that it's just so much more difficult to carry the burden of government regulation and all these hidden taxes and fees, they've got to be passed on to somebody. You can't There's two other wrinkles that we haven't looked at, too, which are, one, the inflation was already going up before the whole uh, COVID lockdown fiasco. Uh, but inflation was going into assets, into the stock market, into real estate, into uh, things other than uh, goods and services, which is uh, uh, was welcomed, especially by the uh, by the by the people who owned those assets, mm -hmm. namely the the one percent or the ten percent at the top. The people who don't own assets, don't own their own home, don't own anything in in the way of stocks and bonds, they weren't particularly happy. Where you know, which which led to uh, a lot of class warfare, which is continuing, and and the other thing that I have to mention, which is uh, the whole Biden thing, blaming the oil companies for for inflation. Biden's first act upon taking over the White House was to shut down the pipelines, and you you know purposefully trying to decrease the supply of of oil because that's well green or something. And then, you know, and his lame uh, solution is to re reduce, uh, release oil from the uh, strategic uh, oil reserve, which is supposed to be there in time of, you know, war or national emergency. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I have nothing but contempt for the uh, economic uh, savvy or lack of savvy of uh, or just dishonesty on the part of the people that uh, are propping up uh, the uh, supposed president who is enjoying his weekend at Bernie's. Mm. Well, and, yeah. and uh, add to that, there is one, there is one tiny little good light at the end of the tunnel. The, the Biden administration uh, and, and somehow the, uh, the, the elites, uh, the deep state are now taking a look at uh, nuclear power in a different light because uh, they, they are so concerned about carbon release into the atmosphere and they know it's going to take a little bit longer than they thought it would right in for a rational person, right in never, for renewables to completely supply all the power on this planet. And uh, Gates and uh, Warren Buffett got together and they're going to produce a, a new generation nuclear power plant now all we got to do is get them to look at the 1970 whatever era law it was that that uh, Carter passed that makes it illegal to reprocess spent nuclear fuel in this country and and then um, you know maybe we're on the right road there. There's a well, I, I, I agree with you. I support nuclear. However, there's one problem with nuclear, which is the nuclear power plants were granted an exemption from liability if. Uh, they have a problem, like a meltdown or something like that. So very similar to the vaccine manufacturers who have a, a, a guarantee that they are, are not liable if their vaccines cause problems. Uh, I, I'm fully in support of nuclear power, but you know, let them let the people who produce the nuclear power have full legal liability if something goes awry. Well, I, I absolutely agree with that. And then you know, if it was take that one step further and. Let's have uh, political elected political officials have full legal liability when their programs go awry. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk about programs going awry. We're going to move on here, John. But we're talking about programs running awry. The California's legal weed industry can't compete because they've regulated it into uncompetitiveness. And if you can well, still go on those, if you can still buy it from the local drug dealer, why would you go and pay more for less quality and less service at the store? It, it, these people are morons. They've taxed it to a point where it's, so, where it's overly expensive. They've regulated it to a point where it's almost impossible for people to who know who know the, actually know the business to get involved in the business. And if you have a criminal rat background record, like say for selling drugs, you can't actually open the business. And so, <laughs> so no kidding that the legal business can't compete. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. And what's happening? 
on the, on the other hand, uh, that they don't talk about is the fact that um, there's overproduction. There, there is way more weed being produced on all the, the legal plots that they've granted and a bunch more they won't grant than consumers will consume through the, uh, through the licensed dispensaries or whatever they're calling them. Um, and there are like, what is it in, in San Diego with all the bajillions of people they got, they got 19 pot shops. I mean, Sacramento has, has a lot, but, uh, I know an awful lot of people who are still growing their own, which is completely legal and uh, about one twentieth the cost of buying it in the licensed and regulated store. And, well, it's not completely uh, illegal to grow your own, but but uh, no, completely yeah, I mean, illegal to grow, to grow your own if you're not selling it. I mean, you can grow, I think, five or six yeah. plants, or whatever. Which, for personal consumption, if you show me someone that can consume that much, because under grow lights and everything, you've got at least three growing cycles a year for pot. I think it's every ninety days now. What is that? Four. I mean, just one pot plant. If you can show me an individual that can consume all of that in, in a year, well, let's say two. I bow to them for their ability to get high, that high, and actually get out of their house ever. So, you well, know, you've met Snoop Dogg, right? You've seen Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I'm sure one plant's not enough. <laughs> well, Snoop, is, Snoop is a mutant, though. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're Olympic athletes. They're talented singers. There are, you know, politicians who never utter a word of truth. These people are all mutants. And Snoop Dogg's ability to consume uh, weed is, is, a, is a, maybe they should have a Nobel Prize for that. I think yeah, him and Willie Nelson can sit down there and have a conversation about their, their unique abilities. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, let's move on. Talk about yeah. unique abilities. Um, Lorena Gonzalez has had ethics complaint filed against her for, for negotiating a contract with the oh the Federation of Labor Unions is it I, oh, I forget exactly who it is SEIU SEIU no no it was the Fed it's the Federation of Labor Unions it's the labor union tra the, the labor union trade or the uh, tra yeah. lobbying organization or trade yeah. association whatever yeah. yeah so she was apparently she's been well, even though she claims she hasn't she's been caught <laughs> negotiating a contract behind closed doors which is a violation of uh, of the law, but now just recently they've actually come out and said, yes, we're going to offer her a position. <laughs> so when they, when they <laughs> offer her this position, she is prohibited by law for a year from uh, contacting any of the people that she worked with in government. So how soon do you think it will take her to violate that regulation? Like 10 seconds? Yeah, and, and it's, it's just another demonstration of the revolving door between uh, regulated industries and their regulators, and, uh, and and you know people that that write the laws, uh, or, or or enforce the laws, uh, the turnstile between government and industry. That's been going on at the federal level for decades, at the state level for decades, and it's it's what you can be what you what you can expect when you have an overregulated, overpoliced society which is exactly what we have and then i want to add something if it, did anybody look, i can't remember all of it and i don't want to waste time by trying to pull it up on my computer her her uh curriculum vitae uh her uh, bio stanford ucla uh one other i mean she went to the she she schools so um the the Unfortunately, I think uh, the major schools in this country are now turning out, and I'm not saying this is everybody that goes, sociopaths who have uh, the ability to maneuver in the slime, and it's all about power, and it's all about connections, and it's not about producing anything. You know what, I, would, I, I hate to say there ought to be a law, but I, I hope that the American people will wake up one day and, and realize that, that what they really need in power are people who have actually produced something, who have either had a manufacturing company or a service company or even owned a couple of franchises. And then they'll understand the real world because these people that grow up in these ivory towers of insulated intellectual hogwash, 
do not connect with normal people and they never yeah. Yeah. And, go, and going back, going back full circle, it's the most highly regulated, highly governmentally controlled industries that have the highest rates of inflation, namely education, health. Those are the two big ones. Those have inflation rates that are well above those of, say, uh, potatoes or gasoline or anything that uh, is yeah. less, less regulated. Well, then, the housing, and then or forget housing there, Richard. Yeah, yeah, housing is another highly regulated industry. And it shows up this thing right here. Uh, not the car. Yeah, well, the yeah, cost of yeah, the you're, that thing. These ha have had price decreases given well, their capacity. I mean, given, given what they do. But the the the, uh, the the networks that provide us access, especially the big fat cable tube that comes into our house, uh, because that is a regulated industry where they parcel out bandwidth and hand it to people, that's had a huge increase uh, in cost. You look at, at what it should be, you know, five, if 5G had been allowed to, to go, you know, 20 years ago when it was feasible and the towers were all up, it should cost us pretty much nothing to uh, send and receive a signal. And when all these... Uh, all these little satellites that uh, that Elon Musk and other people are putting up when there's enough of them up there, that monopoly will be closed. They'll probably figure out a way to regulate a surcharge to pay for the mothballing of, of the cable TV that we have. Anyway, I'm going on and on. And on. Let's, we probably should go on to something else. Yeah. Well, the, the corruption is rampant. And here in California, where Lorena Gonzalez specifically, she did. She went from college to a labor organizer to an assembly member, and now she's going back to being a labor organizer again. She's essentially had that same track record. And as you know, there is this pipeline from the from the universities to labor to the government, and you know, which is fine if there was enough diversity in in these in the, the representatives. We don't have enough diversity. We have too many people who are career politicians and not enough people who are career something else who go in to be politicians. You need a handful of career politicians and then you need the other 90% to cycle in and out. And we don't have that, but we can talk about socking, cycling in and out. Another Cuomo has bit the dust. Chris Cuomo has been fired <laughs> for, you know, these say it was to help his brother. But if you actually read the, the statement that um, CNN sent to their employees, there was an allegations of sexual harassment that came up in the last week or so is actually the reason they fired him. And so that they suspended him and then fired him. And so that was an interesting kind of again, against update. Andrew himself against Chris Cuomo. Yeah, Chris, I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there was a new allegation. And so the finally, is that what it actually takes to get rid of these people who are so obviously corrupt is that you actually have to get well, the me, uh, me too movement, but kind of quietly. It, it's just so, yeah, I, I mean, if you take a look at the, the Cuomo's and the Clintons and the pretty much any uh, uh, politician, uh, Democrat or Republican in the position of, of power, Trump, they're all, uh, not all, many of them uh, are sexual predators. It'll be interesting to see how many names get named at the Epstein, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the Maxwell trial that's going on to, uh, as we speak. Mm. Yeah, I, I'd be really curious to see if she doesn't commit suicide somewhere in the next. <laughs> I don't. I shouldn't yeah. laugh, but yeah. No, no, it's it's a horrible thing. But you know, she was basically a a, a procurer, um, and there's at least based upon all the hearsay evidence I'm seeing. I hate to label anybody anything based upon what I read in the press because the press told us that uh, uh, our 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 previous president uh, colluded with the. Uh, with the Russians to, to try to fix the election. And that was all just made up out of whole cloth. So, I mean, this, I'm, I don't think this is, uh, but some of the things that they, they're repeating, even in, uh, you know, the Clinton News Network and, and uh, MSNBC and all the rest of that is uh, how many trips uh, old Wild Bill, so your oats Clinton took on that airplane, 26 that they know of. So, yeah, and, and Epstein visited the White House 17 times. I mean, I think that was, I'm not sure which president, but he was a regular, probably slept in the Lincoln bedroom and who knows what else. I wonder if he took sip, never mind. <laughs> well, it is, it's, it's, an, it's a messy business, this politics, where the power corrupts, 
Sure. But it also it also attracts people who are corruptible, right? It's not just that power corrupts. People who are corruptible are attracted to places where there is power. And whether it's here in the state of California with people like Lorena Gonzalez or Epstein and all the people who wanted his money or his access to contacts or whatever whatever he was selling or not, you know, who knows what that actual story ends up being. You know, or the Cuomo's essentially selling access to power back and forth, you know, access to the media for his the friends of friends of Chris or friends of Andrew. We saw we saw during the course of the the pandemic where Andrew was Andrew Cuomo was essentially given a, a free pass. Softball questions didn't have, you know, his brother covered for his butt over the um, the nursing home deaths that essentially no one wants to talk about, you know, the 40,000 nursing home deaths that no one wants to talk about. And, you know, I'm one of these things, it's early enough where you could ex- kind of excuse it, but I think we've, you know, as a mistake, is an honest mistake, but I don't think we can excuse that now. You know, everything now is in question about what those brothers and CNN and the politics out of everywhere. I mean, how can anything be trusted right now? How does... How can anything? Well, and that's a healthy thing. I mean, the less trust we have for governor uh, for government, the more uh, we'll, uh, as citizens, be willing to stand up for our rights, willing to say, "No, I'm not going to obey that silly mandate, that uh, dumb rule." You know, uh, the fact that people are more people are obviously buying marijuana on the black market than from the uh, legally sanctioned, uh, essentially uh, government monopoly stores, uh, the better. Uh, competition is a good thing. The more people that say, you know what, I think I'm going to uh, take my chances when it comes to uh, my health uh, in regard to the various mandates that are being handed down, the more people that do that, the better. We're seeing massive uh, street protests in places like uh, Melbourne, Australia, in uh, in Austria, and uh, uh, really throughout Europe. Uh, Those are the kind of things that say, uh, you know what, government, you've been lying to us for so long about so many different things. We're not going to take you seriously anymore, and we're not going to uh, obey every uh, T and I crossing that you, or I, I dotting and T crossing that you uh, expect us to. And the government can't exist without the consent of the governed. That's a very, very basic principle. Uh, and I think we're on the cusp of uh, a situation where uh, enough people are saying, we don't trust you. We're not, gonna, we're not going to obey any longer. And that is ultimately a good thing. It'll lead to uh, less government and or, and or better government in the future. And I look forward to that. I agree. And, and I want to add something about the whole corruption thing. When, when, uh, it, it is very hard to compete in an unfettered marketplace to provide the, the best car care, the best groceries or the best service or the best haircut or all the rest of that. That's, 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 that's the jungle out there. It is much easier in this overregulated world that we live in. Uh, and the U.S. is, I think, 24th on the list of economically freest countries. Somehow we've dropped to 24 on that list. Um, it's much easier to to go to a regulator and buy uh, market share or buy making something that your competition uh, is doing illegal or or buy a a uh, an inspector uh, to look the other way while you throw up a shoddy building, and then people in their in their they're wanting to trust somebody, believe that these regulatory agencies are actually there for their benefit. They are not. They're there for the benefit of the people to be protected from competition. And, and the problem with all these layers of regulation and all these regulators is that it makes the people themselves corrupt because they start seeing backsheesh, uh, the, you know, the crossing of the palm with silver, as the way you do business. And when you realize you have to pay a little bribe here, a little bribe there as you go on. And we do it in this country officially, 
But I think it's getting to the point where we're also doing it unofficially, i.e. the word permit. I need somebody to give me permission to build a freaking house. And this happens everywhere. And it, it's, it's, it's eating away at the moral fiber of our country and the whole world. And as soon as we throw off these jokes, and I'm, I'm going to say again, the, the powers that we let be, not the powers that be. It's, it's way past time for us to just put up with this stuff because it's become oppressive. Yeah, and it's not just the the permitting. It's you you now structure jobs in a way so you don't have to get permits, right? You do them in chunks, small enough chunks where you don't have to do permits. So we're going to do this chunk now, and then we're going to do this little chunk later, and this little chunk later. So we don't have to actually go down to there and pay a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred bucks or whatever it is to get a permit. So the government says, okay, yes, you can change that pipe underneath your house. You know. <laughs> You know, if a plumber has to come in and fix your house, they can only work on like six feet of, of, of pipe at a time because if it goes farther than that, it costs too much and you have to pull a permit. So you just do it in six feet chunks. You go all the way through your house in six feet chunks to avoid having to pay the extra permitting costs and the extra time and then having the inspectors come in and having to look at this thing that no one really needs to look at because it's just a pipe. <laughs> And it does. It creates this whole notion where you have you now have people doing home improvements under, you know, with unlicensed unlicensed contractors, which is fine. But you now you have no recourse because you can't even really go to to court. You can go to court and you can to, to sue them, but it's like yeah, you signed an unlicensed contractor. Of course, you got screwed. And so you set up this condition. Worse than that, You're because by by hiring that contractor in that way and not following the rules, you've broken the law. So you can't actually, you become a criminal. You can't actually file charges against your partner in crime. But anyway, probably want to cover one last thing before. before well, I don't know if we've got enough one last thing. We've got a minute and a half. You got one last thing you want to cover, John? We can t uh, hey, how about China? The U.S. has said they will not send any Olympic officials to the to China for the Winter Games. Oh, I, th I think it's over that... Uh, Oh, what's her name? Peng Shui, Peng Shui, the tennis player who has gone kind of missing, but not really in China over the last couple of well, months. Yeah, he's gone hey. missing, but not sort of like uh, like Jack Ma. Uh, who knows whether she's missing or not? It's uh, totally being manipulated by the Chinese media, uh, and uh, you know the Chinese media. You know, come to think of it, they're providing a very good uh, template that's being followed by the U.S. media. Hmm. Well, theirs is even more insidious because they, you know, here they, they just on Google alter algorithms or don't run a story. But, uh, you know, the, in, in China, they actively go after uh, whatever sector they believe is the problem. So, uh, you know, they're, they're even more aggressive than the, uh, than the uh, inside traders working here. Yeah. The, the censorship is blatant and overt as opposed to, uh, behind the scenes. Well, time yes. is our sensor, so we're going to have to see you guys next week. Thank you for joining us from Team Counterpoint. Please remember to love every everybody. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint Show. In Sacramento, Channel 17 on Comcast. Each Thursday at 8 p.m.